I'm Mitch Woodward with North Carolina Cooperative Extension and today we're in Fayetteville and you can take a look at a fairly good example of an urban stream. We do urban stream repair and restoration because sediment is the number one pollutant in North Carolina and much of the sediment comes from eroding stream banks. Now this stream has been here for a long time obviously so why would it be eroding now? The reason is impervious areas. And what I mean by impervious is upstream, we have a basketball court, we have rooftops, we have houses, we have roads. And every time it rains, all that water washes down through the stream and can impact the stream banks as you see here. As long as we have vegetation, it's held pretty well. But if the velocities increase to a point where the soil starts to erode, that's when we get sediment and soil in the water and that's when it causes water quality degradation. So our program is addressing stream pollution and addressing how we can control erosion on stream banks and some practices that we'll show you. I want to draw an important distinction between stream repair that we're dealing with today and stream restoration. Stream repair is less expensive and you don't require a permit to do it. So here we're, we're, we have the tools of stream repair. What that means is we're working out of the water. In other words, if you take a look at this stream and you know, we've got sandbars, we've got water here. If you look, there's a term called ordinary high water. Very important to understand. In this stream, ordinary high water would be about at this intersection here. You can see between the sand and then the banks. It's important to know that because if you do any work below ordinary high water, putting in a structure, moving rocks, adding materials. You cannot do that without a permit. That's very important. But the work that we're doing today in putting in matting, putting in things like live stakes, we're working above ordinary high water and that does not require a permit. You can put as many native species as you wish along stream banks, but you can't cause erosion. You can't remove natives we're going to add natives, so that is okay. Just remember, if you're working in the water or you're doing grading along the banks, check with your local Army Corps of Engineers or your local uh, Department of Environmental Resources uh, office and check to make sure that you do not need a permit for what you plan to do. One of the techniques that we really like to employ on eroding stream banks that have problems, but not really bad problems, is something called live staking. This is a live stake here. This is a silky willow. This is one of the four to six varieties in North Carolina that we really like to use because they are prolific rooters. We, you can see along this, this live stake, there are places where branches will start to grow once we install this in the ground. You can see the nodes. And the way we use these stakes is we put these in not in the water, but on the stream bank. And these will root from these cuttings. It's a very cheap and effective way to get plants to grow, because as you can see up and down this particular stream bank, there's not much holding the stream bank besides grass and a few weeds. The thing about that is that's fine, but they're not deeply rooted enough. These will send roots down six feet, so it's gonna be a much more effective way to hold the soil. The way you prepare this live stake, and you can cut these yourself if you can identify silky willow, elderberry, silky dogwood, or elderberry, is, or you can buy these online. There are several native plant nurseries in North Carolina locally where you can buy these. So this is about the average length, two to three feet is really good. You wanna make sure that you have the top end, the end that grows out of the ground and not the bottom end because this is the end that's gonna go in the ground. And the best way to tell that is take a look at the nodes. You can see that the branches are growing up. Uh, and with a little bit of experience, you can look at these other nodes without branches and tell that they, this is in fact the right way to plant this. So the first step we do is we make a, a new cut. Nice and sharp. Here we go, that goes into the ground easier. So you just do a nice sharp cut. There we go, that's gonna make for easy installation. And now, when we go to insert these, we insert it along, not in, again in the stream, but along the bank we want to preserve. And the best way to do this is, and we face it downstream. 
The stream is coming from this direction and going, this is downstream. We want to make sure that the tip is pointed downstream and in that way any any trash, any junk that's like for example coming downstream in the water does hits this and then sloughs off. If it's pointing upstream it's going to catch and it could kill or somehow compromise the stake. So we want to face it downstream, find a location on the bank to insert this and then simply, and I got lucky, it went right in. Notice that it's three quarters or two thirds of the way in the bank and about one quarter out. That allows a lot of moist soil contact with the stake. Remember, it doesn't have any roots, so it needs to be able to supply water to the growing point without roots, and the roots will quickly, will quickly grow. We insert these about every three feet along the edge of the bank. So simply we would move down, cut off another. These are dull. <laughs> Here we go. And again, insert. So I'm getting lucky here. These are going in fairly well. Now, if you're not so lucky, and it's not going in so easily, uh, this is a tennis ball with a hole cut in it, and a piece of rebar. You could use a stick or a stake or something. We just simply would make a pilot hole. Then, of course, put your stake in the pilot hole, and, and that makes it, makes it easier. You can also use a mallet. And you'll notice I put that in upside down. <laughs> so you gotta be careful. There we go. And now, have a flat surface that you can strike. Use a mallet, and you can hammer these in. If you split it like I just did, just simply cut it, because now the split, if it's split like this, it's going to desiccate the plant uh, too fast. And so now we've got this inserted. We've got a nice clean cut. The down part is down, the up part is up, and we're right in an area where erosion is occurring. This will grow about six inches the first year. The, it'll sprout, it'll sprout right from the end. You'll see uh, several of these the first year. The next year, two or three times as big. The third year, it really takes off. And we're going to have a mass of plants along this. Why are we doing this? First, you don't need a permit to do this. You can plant native plant species along stream banks anywhere without requiring any type of permit from the state or from the county. The next important thing to remember is that these will heal themselves. If we have a big washout, if we have an erosion problem that occurs when these are small, we can simply put more live stakes in. It's very cheap and effective. These are about 50 to 70 cents a piece. You can buy these at native plant nurseries or you can find them up and down stream banks. Uh, it's a very cheap and effective practice. The best time to put these in is in the fall of the year, from November basically until March. You have to do it in the, uh, in, in the cooler parts of the month of the, of the year rather. And it, they will survive much better. So we like to do it in the winter time of the year. Again, I want to emphasize that before you undertake any type of stream repair or restoration, that you visit with your local extension office, your local soil and water, and Army Corps of Engineers who has jurisdiction over the waters of the state of North Carolina. Again, if you're doing work above ordinary high water, generally you do not need a permit. But if you're doing work in water, you will. So it's important to have a piece of paper that shows that you have approval to do this work and not beg for forgiveness, beg for forgiveness afterwards, after you start to work. I want to thank you for being part of the solution to controlling sediment and stream bank erosion in North Carolina. If you want any additional information, go to our stream repair workshop website. It would be NCSU stream bank repair workshop. Look that up on the web or look at this link that we'll provide at the bottom of this video. And thank you again for being a solution to sediment and erosion control in North Carolina.